Manual Samuel is a gag game, think Octodad or Surgeon Simulator. It's a game designed to be played for a short time and its primary feature is that it's funny. In order to make the player laugh, these games usually present us with some absurd situations and unfriendly gameplay, which is clumsy and unintuitive by design. Even the most mundane tasks require a lot of effort from the player and as soon as more than one such has to be performed simultaneously, it's usually overwhelming. The thing that sets Manual Samuel aside from all the other games of this kind is its story. It tells a story from start to finish with funny and over the top characters, good voice acting and all of it fits the gameplay like a glove. The best part here is the narrator voiced by Brian Summer who comments on the things you need to do and your many failures with humorous remarks. The game introduces us to our protagonist whose name is Samuel, born in a rich family and used to doing nothing and getting everything handed to him. He gets into an argument with his girlfriend, she runs off and as he chases after her, he's run over by a septic truck. Since he hasn't been a nice person, he finds himself in hell and makes a deal with the Grim Reaper who agrees to return him to Earth, but he has to pass a trial if he wants to remain there. He must survive for 24 hours while all of his bodily functions are now manual. This includes blinking, breathing, etc. Naturally a lot more stuff happens along the way and it's quite entertaining, but the star of the show is its gameplay, which requires the player to press a bunch of buttons in order to manage the most mundane tasks. The fun is greatly increased if you have someone who is willing to join you for a quick couch co-op session. We used two PlayStation 4 gamepads which were recognized by the game and it even gave us the correct PS4 prompts when asking us to do stuff. That did help a lot. How this works is that one person would control part of the bodily functions while the other person controls the remaining ones. This can be quite hard to manage. And it takes some getting used to, especially because the game intentionally spices things up by placing Sam in specific situations that require quick time events, having to do things quickly or having to memorize a specific order of inputs during boss battles. This can at times be frustrating, but almost every section can be passed fairly easily with the proper synergy between both players. While the game is more fun when played together, it is also a bit harder since the players have more individual things to control. This would usually be a bad thing, but not so much here where failure is mostly funny and would cause some hilarious comments from the narrator himself. The game took us about 2 hours to complete, but we did take a break in between because it can sometimes become tedious due to the nature of its gameplay. When it comes to its looks, everything is drawn in a style that fits the overall tone of the story, but that comes at a price. Ultra wide is sadly not possible here, 1080p is as far as this goes, but the good news is that it will run on pretty much any computer, so even older hardware or simply a potato with a GPU attached to it should have no problem running this puppy. When it comes to the humor, it's almost always childish and inoffensive, so playing this game with a child will be perfectly fine from that aspect. Just be aware that a kid is probably a very bad partner and will prolong the game significantly, which could actually be a good thing now that I think about it. The game only costs 10 bucks on Steam, which is a very fair price in my opinion. While I do agree with you that 2 hours is a bit short, its humor, story and voice acting make up for that, and if you ask me, the novelty would wear off if prolonged too much, so this duration is actually quite perfect for me. For me and my wife, the game's ending came just at about that point when we've had enough of it anyway. Oh no, I think Manual Samuel is a good party game if you're looking for something that won't take too long to complete and does not take itself too seriously, you will get your money's worth here. While usually most co-op games can be played and enjoyed alone, I feel that this one you really need a friend for. If you sit down and play it alone, it doesn't feel like you'll be playing the game the way it was intended to be played and you'd just be missing out because most of the jokes and the fun here comes from being with another person and sucking together so to speak of and since it has couch co-op mode there is no excuse for you not to get a buddy and play with them you could even share the price of the game with that friend so five bucks each of you is pretty good if you consider the fact that you can finish it in two to three hours depending on how bad you are so the more you suck as a team the more gameplay you'll have or rather the longer you'll be playing i think it's okay price wise while the concept is not unique, I feel like it's executed better than most other games of this kind do it. So yeah, if the visuals and the whole idea of having a narrator who teases you constantly and makes little jokes about how you feel sounds like an appealing thing to you, then you should definitely give it a try. If I had to compare it to another game, as a matter of fact, I would say that reminds me a lot of the Stanley Parable. If you've played that game, you had a narrator there who would constantly 
ridicule you for the choices that you make and comment on them. In that game the narrator had a more controlling position, here he controls nothing, he just talks about the things you do and the things you need to do, but I personally found that to be very entertaining. On the other end, if you are someone who is impatient or if you're just alone, you don't have someone to play this with, I'd rather say then skip it because the game requires a certain level of patience due to the fact that you need to get acclimated to the specific types of controls, considering that one player controls only one leg and the other player controls the other leg. So that's definitely something you have to keep in mind. But like I said earlier, if you want to play this with a child, this would be one of the greatest games for that. You could have fun with the child and bond with it and it's pretty safe for it there's nothing vulgar here or anything like that this has been a short review but i hope that it was still entertaining and informative if you would like to support what i do you could do so over at my patreon page to which you can find the link in the description of the video in any case thank you for watching and have a great day